Hey y'all. It's Hillbilly Row from Hillbilly Row and D. If you have like, like, yet like, subscribe to our channel, please do so. Also, if you see us using any kind of instruments on our channel, we will have those posted in the affiliate link below for our Amazon. That way it's easy to find. So today I'm making a meatloaf. So what does this entail? Well, I only eat chicken. We know this. If you'd like, yet yeah, like, subscribe, please do so. So what I'm doing is I'm taking an onion and I'm putting it in my little thingamajiggy. And I have some bell pepper that I'm putting in there too. So I am going to put a little bit of milk in with this because it all goes to the same place anyway. And we're gonna get this ground up so I can fix it in my meatloaf. So I have a lid here to my ninja, I think that's what it's called. Oh, magic bullet or something. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn that off. Now that that is liquefied, I don't have to worry about it going into my mixer or my my meat and being all chunky because if it's chunky, it will pull your meat apart in the cooking process. And I have found over the years that this is the easiest way for me to add bell pepper and onion into my meatloaf because sometimes we like meatloaf burgers, but you know what they say, don't let your meatloaf. So we're gonna grab some soy, or not soy sauce, it's um, Worcestershire sauce. So we're gonna grab some Worcestershire sauce, however you say that word. Yeah, I'm a hillbilly, I don't know what and I'm putting on my rubbers. Um, oh, wrong way. It was backwards. So I'm putting on my gloves. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna give it a little couple squirts, maybe a teaspoon. So that's all I'm gonna put in there. And as y'all know, I work in a very, very small kitchen. But I already put one tablespoon of this in there. This is tomato chicken seasoning. So um, it's tomato bouillon with chicken flavor. So I get this off of Amazon. So with that, I'm going to get my egg beaded up. If I can find that egg spoon. I always do my egg off the side because I, I don't want to make a mess. And trying to mix up your egg in your meatloaf and getting it mixed within is hard. Now I've taken breadcrumbs, but today I might use the rest of this up that Mr. D bought because, you know, and there's my milk, three-fourths cup of milk because I'm doing three pounds of beef. This is Italian style breadcrumbs and I think it asks for uh, one-fourth the cup. So, Mr. D got this for some recipe, but, you know, waste not, want not, y'all. So, I need a little bit more. I usually go by the feel. And honestly, I usually, I usually use uh, oats because it's, it's quick and easy. I like oats. 
Not that y'all would know because I make oats every day for breakfast. So with that, we're going to have the... Ugh, I got my hand dirty. So we got the chicken, the egg, the milk, the breadcrumbs. So ketchup is for the top. But y'all just see me make this. Now it says two tablespoons per thing of ground beef. So we're going to do... It's two tablespoons for two pounds of ground beef. So we're doing three because we're doing three pounds of ground chicken. So next, what do we do? We get our hands in here and we get dirty. Yuck. I hate touching meat, y'all. I, I literally, it turns my stomach. Um, we were at mom and dad's this weekend and we were talking and, you know, about growing up and stuff and hard times and, um, my mom got to laughing because, um, we ate popcorn for a long while and mom was cooking it on a, um, she was cooking it on a, a uh, kerosene stove. And if you don't know what a kerosene stove is, it's from that 60s and 70s. And it was a gas-filled stove, which had a big bottle that you poured upside down on it. And it ran off kerosene. So, I walk in the kitchen. I'm probably four, maybe five years old at that. And I walk in the kitchen. And I went, mmm, popcorn, because I thought we were having popcorn. Well, my mom was making something else. And my sister started laughing. And I said, boy, I like popcorn. And they both go, well, my sister said, mom just farted. And I was like, what? We're not having popcorn? No, mom just farted. So, I was like, okay. But that's the joke in our family because it's actually not a joke. It's, it's a true. I'm going to have a little bit more of these in here. When I say a little bit more, we're just going to use the rest of them. Because I think it's too wet. Um, so, but that's the thing in our family now. Um, I remember being embarrassed by it for years because they would talk about that. And I'd be, shut up, shut up. But now I'm almost 50 years old. You know, it was funny. Um, but my mom always told, you know, Mr. D or friends. And it'd be embarrassing. So we're going to get this put in a pan. First, we're going to get off my ham. We'll be right back. So we got a pan out here. And I got the pan well greased. So I'm going to take this meatloaf and I'm going to, I want to add a little bit more seasoning. Let's get that done. I'm trying not to touch anything with this other hand. I'm going to add a little bit more seasoning and get that mixed in there. Now remember, this does have ground a uh, bell pepper, about a half a cup, and it also has ground up onion in it. So it is going to be a real flavorful meatloaf. But as many people in the South know, everything goes in the meatloaf except your shoe. <laughs> Usually, you know, you add crackers or whatnot to it. Well, instead of crackers, we're adding some, what is that stuff called? Oh, ground, uh, or bread, bread, oh, bread crumbs. That's the word I'm looking for. Now, I did, I did put grease in the bottom. And the reason why I do that is because a meatloaf with chicken does not have a lot of oil. So you want to make sure that don't stick on your pan. So I want it to come out nice and together. So 
so we got it all greased up and down the sides. Now, a little trick that I do with my meatloaf is, because it takes so long to cook a meatloaf, I take a, a, a metal knife and I poke it down right in the center. And the reason why I do that is because when that knife hits up, it's going to help cook it from the center out. I'll get all this stuff out of here. So next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Oh, I got oil all over me. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this meatloaf and I'm going to put it in a 350 oven. And I'm going to cook it for about an hour. And then it will be ready for me to uncover it and cook it for about another 20, 30 minutes with the ketchup on top. Some people might say, oh, that's too much. Or da, da, da. That's the way I do it. it it's okay. This is, this is okay. So, I have a pan. So, instead of instead of me wasting some moon full, I got a pan that I'm going to put on top of that. And that makes it just as good. So my oven, my oven is set on 350. And we're going to put her in there for about an hour. And then we're going to pull her out, uncover her, put tomato or ketchup on her. And then we're going to cook her for about another 25 minutes, get that ketchup and that brown sugar mixed in. And we'll be right back. Hey y'all, I'm back. So our meatloaf is done. It temped at 172. And if you see right there, that's still them pears cooking. I might have to take those and put them in a bowl and then put them in the fridge. And then restart that process tomorrow. Because it's getting to be five o'clock now. So it's almost supper time. So I'm going to put you down here and I'm going to show you how I put the sauce on my meatloaf. Now, in this bowl, I have approximately one fourth cup of brown sugar. With that, I'll mix with my ketchup with put part in on it. About a half a cup of ketchup. I'm going to take my spoon or my fork. I say spoon. I'm sorry, y'all. I got one brain sound. She on life support. Now, this is the way Grandma always made hers. But it gives it that awesome crust on top of it. But I just want to make sure I have enough ketchup in there to mix in with that brown sugar. Now... And you want to make sure you get your brown sugar mixed in really well. So this is going to go on top of the meatloaf. And then I'm going to put it in the oven for another 20 to 25 minutes to let this get kind of a little crust on it. But I'm going to take this. Mmm, that's good. Okay. And I'm just gonna go across the meatloaf. I did take the I did take the knife out of the center. Now, if you didn't understand the knife, what the knife does is it helps it cook on the inside because the metal pan gets really hot on the outside. But if it gets hot enough, it will help that. It will help that um, knife will help heat it up. And that's not enough. Because we extra. So. Let me just grab this. This is an eighth of a cup. So. Let's make another fourth. And I, I, it's not packed. It don't have to be packed. I love my containers, y'all. I'm a container queen. And we're going to grab our ketchups. And I use the organic ketchup because I can't have the high fructose corn syrup. 
And if you, whenever you find out that you can't have a certain item, you really have to start reading labels. Oh, goodness. They put high fructose corn syrup in everything. It's a wonder they don't put it in your toilet paper. I mean, about the only ice cream I can have is, I think it's either Briars or Kroger's does have like a, a vanilla yogurt that doesn't have it. Not yogurt, but, um, what is it called? It's not ice cream, it's, it is yogurt ice cream. Um, so I like to have a good old, I, I don't, I like all my meat to get some goodness on it. And I should have used a spoon like this, but I used a fork like an idiot. Let me grab my spoon over here. I hope that does a lot better. Because I ain't making no more of that. That's enough. So I like to spread that out evenly. From edge to edge. Go down. And. But what I was saying is. When you can't have something. You figure out. They put that stuff in everything. And you're like. Oh my goodness. So what I'm going to do now is. First, I'm going to wash my dishes after I get off of here. Oh, that's hot. I forgot. So, I'm going to put this back in the oven on 350 for another 20 to 25 minutes. And then we'll be back. So, if you see here, I got my... This is our uh, meatloaf. And it's done. And as you see, some of it's just... It's got a good coating on it. You always want that good coating on your meatloaf. No, it's not pulled off. I just pulled it out of the oven. So, we're going to try a piece and then let it rest. So, there you is. Hi. There's Mr. D. No, it's not pulled off. Can you tell? You better blow on that. You better blow like that like I like to blow money. Because I love to blow money. It's still too hot. Who could have blowed on it some more, y'all? Woo! <clears throat> Did you even taste it from the heat? Woo! Oh, good. Delicious. I mean, I love that sausage. I like the sauce is good. It's your grandma's recipe. It's, yeah. Well, except really I good. used chicken. Mm hmm Came out really good, though. So, there we go. That's it. That's our supper. Tonight, we're going to have meatloaf and some... Mashed potatoes? Um, mashed potatoes with um, chives and sour cream in it. You want to try those? <clears throat> He's using a different fork. So there's our supper. Yeah, so good supper. we want to say thank you for coming. If you have yet liked or subscribed to our channel, what's taking you so long, y'all? Well, I'm just a hillbilly cook. I cook everything from scratch, as y'all know. Um, I guess I've always cooked this way, ain't I? 
but I mean, we do have some times yeah, where we, we have were, a pizza. Or uh, when we were younger, we used to make those. Um, what do you what do you call those? All the sandwiches and sandwich all, pocket uh, sandwich. What was that stuff? Um, corned beef hash in yeah. a little sandwich maker. Back when we were poor and we could afford uh -huh. only corned beef hash, because back then corned beef hash was, I think, a quarter a can. Yeah. <clears throat> and a loaf of bread was 50 cents, so that's... But we've gotten better over the years. Well, it's not getting better. It's you just, you learn mm -hmm. being in school and working and all that. It takes up your whole day, <laughs> especially if you've got homework still. <laughs> but on that note... Always say your prayers, pray for one another, pray for your enemies, and always be humble. In a world full of chaos and destruction, be that light at beacon in somebody's eye. And on that note, y'all have a great day. God bless, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.